Good day. I'm Dr. Charles Dedham. I'm chairman of TMIT Global and one of the co-founders of the MedTech Bystander Rescue Care Program. We have to thank many of our now more than 130 experts we convened when the coronavirus crisis emerged, including participation of our student outreach team convened in 2021. We've produced a number of Survive and Thrive Guide programs since March of 2020. This brief film addresses some of the latest highlights of our more comprehensive programs and allows us to target our latest challenges. We are now in the heart of the Delta surge, battling a viral variant that is much more contagious, more lethal, and more likely to harm children. It's a whole new ballgame with Delta. Masks are a vital defense to protect your families. Infection risk is just basic math. The greater number of virus particles you potentially breathe, the greater the risk for infection and the greater the risk for severe disease. It's a numbers game. In medicine, we call this dose or viral load. It is believed that individuals become infected by the virus entering the body through the wet mucous membranes that are the moist linings of our nose, eyes, mouth, and respiratory system. Masks have become increasingly recognized as critically important. However, they're no substitute for social or physical distancing, which is most important, hand washing and avoiding touching our faces and disinfecting high contact surfaces. Masks are one of these four pillars and they all work together. The three critical factors of your use of masks are the filter, the fit, and the finish. The quality of the mask as the filter the fit with no air escape during breathing, and your finish, how you remove, clean, or dispose of the masks safely. Leading experts are recommending that we upgrade our use of masks from cloth to surgical masks or N95 and high quality K95 masks when we can. Why? Dr. Scott Gottlieb is a former FDA commissioner and is a director on both boards of Pfizer and Illumina. He's a frequent speaker on the COVID pandemic. Well, look, the physical properties of the virus, as best we know, haven't changed. The reason why this Delta strain is more transmissible is because there's just more of it. You develop more virus early in the course of your infection. You develop high viral titers very quickly. So that means if you want to derive protection, if you as an individual want to protect yourself from this virus, mask quality does matter. And wearing a higher quality N95 or KN95 mask is going to afford you more protection. In the setting of a more transmissible strain, you need to be more mindful of the quality of the mask that you're wearing. If all you're doing is wearing a cloth mask or a procedure mask, you're going to cut down on the, the propensity of you to spread the virus to others. So you'll reduce the odds that you could spread the virus to others if you're one of those people who has a mild or asymptomatic infection and doesn't know you're infected. But if you actually want to derive protection from other people being infected around you, mask quality does matter. So people should look for higher quality masks. And there's ample supply right now. In the beginning of this epidemic, we didn't have enough N95 masks. Now we do. People can go out and get them, especially if they're more vulnerable. Dr. Michael Osterholm is an internationally recognized medical detective and director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, or SIDRA, at the University of Minnesota, with more than 45 years of experience investigating infectious disease outbreaks. As I've stated, dating way back to April of 2020, in the earliest days of the pandemic, we know that this virus is transmitted largely by aerosols, those very tiny particles that right now, as I speak, are filling this room. If I wanted to understand an aerosol, I would be in a room with someone who is smoking a cigarette and say, oh my, I can smell that very quickly, even if I'm 20 feet away. And then I would say, does whatever I'm using to protect myself prevent me from smelling that? If you don't, then you know what? You're going to have viruses leak into whatever you have. And what I've been uh, really strongly urging is, yes, mask, but mask with the most uh, highly efficient and effective means you have. And these are the N95 masks. So in the face of Delta, now with both vaccinated and unvaccinated people having 1,000 times the viral particles in their nose, who should wear masks? We need the answers to four questions regarding Delta, whether we're vaccinated or not. Can I catch it? Can I spread it? Can I get sick now? And can I get long haul COVID? These questions are all being continuously studied. However, as of the date of this recording in late August, whether you're vaccinated or not. The answers all appear to be yes, both for adults and children. Yes, you can catch it. Yes, you can spread it. 
Yes, you can get sick now. And yes, you may be able to get long haul COVID. We will not go into the detail of this table now. However, there's enough evidence that both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals need to wear masks now that we know that aerosol spread is a key issue and that the Delta virus is so contagious. Please watch our Survive and Thrive Guide programs for more detail. So now for the critical issues of masks. Filter. When we talk about filter, we mean how the materials of the mask block the virus from entering your mouth and nose. Before we talk about the types of masks and how they filter, we need to understand the basics of droplets and the two types of airborne transmission, large droplet and aerosol spread. A typical sneeze may unleash as many as 40,000 droplets. These not only cause direct spread to others, but land on surfaces we come in contact with all the time. First, it's important to know how small the coronavirus is. They're smaller than a micron or a millionth of a meter, and a droplet that can carry the viruses is about five microns. A human hair might be at 100 microns in diameter. A red blood cell might be seven microns, and you just can't see anything under 40 microns. So what infects us is just too small to see. We can become infected by breathing droplets expelled by infected patients who breathe, talk, sing, cough, or sneeze. The virus particles are encased in globs of mucus, saliva, and water. Bigger globs fall faster, so they splash down quickly. Traditionally called droplets, they fall rapidly onto anything nearby. Before new technologies were developed, scientists thought they only drop within three to as far as six feet from those infected. Smaller globs evaporate faster than they fall. Therefore, the viruses can linger in the air and drift farther afield. These are called aerosols. A competition between droplet size, inertia, gravity, and evaporation determines how far droplets and aerosols travel through the air. Gravity is stronger than evaporation on larger droplets, and they settle faster and land on surfaces nearby. Aerosols are smaller and evaporate faster than they settle and float in the air. We now know that aerosols are a major route of spread. That combined with the contagiousness of Delta is a lethal combination. The filter is the first critical factor of masks, and the N95 mask is being recommended by many experts now. However, they need a good fit to deliver the optimal performance of 95% filtration. Masks work by a combination of filtration and electrostatic attraction that catch viruses. An electrostatic charge is put on N95 and surgical masks in the factories. This helps them catch germs by attraction. The plus is this really works. The minus is that we have to be careful about how we might clean them for reuse in case it would take away the electrostatic charge. N95 masks catch droplets and viruses with very refined filtration materials. They're specified to catch 95% of 0.3 micron particles, and that's how they get their name. N95 masks are typically used in hospitals when caregivers are performing medical procedures with clear aerosol risk. They must be fit tested using a method defined by the manufacturers to make sure there's no leakage around the seal of the mask and the face. In fact, due to the resistance they generate, without a fit test verification process, a surgical mask may offer more protection because more airflow may pass through the mask. An N95 mask with a valve, such as an industrial grade mask, that lets airflow out will not afford protection to the public. Surgical masks, or what many call procedural or medical procedural masks, have been the mask of choice until the Delta surge arrived. Early in the pandemic, they were thought to block 99% of exhale droplets and 75% inhale droplets. The American Society of Testing and Materials is an international organization that sets the standards for surgical masks. They establish three levels of barrier protection, level one, low, level two, moderate, and level three, maximum. Levels two and three are recommended for COVID protection with equal filtration capability. However, level three is the most fluid resistant surgical mask. Surgical masks catch droplets and viruses by both electrostatic attraction and filtration through the processes of physical interception and inertial impaction. These are just technical terms for how they physically catch the particles. A two-layer cloth mask is thought to block both 
exhaled and inhaled droplets by 60%, now believed to be woefully inadequate to protect us from the Delta variant. Cloth masks only catch droplets and viruses by filtration. That's why they're less breathable and less effective. HEPA, high efficiency particulate air filters, which are in airliners and certain buildings, work by three processes, inertial impaction, interception, and diffusion, but not by electrostatic attraction. When you consider using cloth barriers, keep in mind that Duke researchers found that neck fleece, gaiters, or bandanas offer very little protection. The second critical factor is fit. If air is escaping around the mask, the purpose of the mask is defeated. The better the seal, the better protection. And don't touch the surface of the masks while wearing them. The second aspect of fit is to wear the mask properly, which is a major issue. And when you use them, please don't wear them under your nose. Up to a quarter of the people routinely put whatever they have under their nose. That's nothing more than a chin diaper. And, and it doesn't provide you any protection. And so, again, we also need to instruct people on how to use them. And I think that's the important message on masking. A mask should completely cover the nose and mouth and should be tight around the ears or head for a snug fit. Some of the most commonly seen mistakes are wearing them without a good fit and failing to cover both the nose and the mouth. In our certification course, we show how professional caregivers remove masks they will have to reuse after they've cared for someone with known COVID-19. We show how to store them for reuse and how to make them last. If you were to care for someone at home who is sick, remember that you want to reduce the dose or the number of virus particles you might absorb. Your best defenses are distance, speed, and barriers. Keep your distance from the patient. Minimize the time in the same room or nearby. And properly use barriers. A mask is a barrier. The last dimension of fit is the use of multiple masks or layers, either because an ideal filter cannot be found or that multiple layers help provide a better seal. Many of our leaders in government and industry double mask. The third critical factor of masks is the finish. Safe and careful removal of the mask after use, washing your hands, and decontamination of reusable masks. Remember, don't touch the surface of the mask while wearing them. Carefully remove the mask by the straps, again without touching the surface of the filter section. Wash your hands thoroughly after you handle the mask, and remember, we naturally touch our faces about 23 to 24 times an hour. If you're using cloth masks as a second layer over a surgical mask, wash them with warm soap and water. Dispose of disposable masks carefully. And if you're forced to reuse disposable masks, rotate them and store them in a dry place to allow them to air out and allow the virus to die. Many caregivers put them in lunch bags so that they can dry out and they rotate one for each day of the week. A final word on buying masks. Make sure if you are buying level three surgical masks, N95 or KN95 masks made in China, that they are approved for medical use and that you are purchasing them from a trusted source. There are many counterfeits. Early in the pandemic, Dr. Atul Gawande, the best-selling author and global leader in healthcare quality, said it best about masks. I protect you and you protect me. But I just wanna say, for your benefit and for the benefit of all your family, and for everybody else around you, please, please, please wear a mask, all right? It's not a political statement. It's a statement of unselfishness. It's a statement of love. It's a statement of responsibility. It's a statement of good stewardship. It's a statement of loving your neighbor as yourself. Thank you so very much for sharing these resources with your families, colleagues, and friends. You'll be in our prayers. God bless you. The care of our communities is absolutely critical. Thank you for all you're doing to protect those at risk and those who are most vulnerable. As we say to all of our MedTAC bystander rescue care teams, we have to fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. Everyone is a patient and everyone can be a caregiver.